Hi, I'm Phil DiCollegero. I'm the Executive Director of the Amesbury Chamber of Commerce, and you're joining us for another episode of Behind the Brick Wall. This is where we partner up with our friends at Mountaintop Landscaping, as well as our friends at Faulkner Commercial Group, led by Janet Faulkner, as well as our friends at Amesbury Community Television, to take a sneak peek behind the brick wall of the Amesbury businesses that help drive our local economy. Today, we're going on a couple neat visits, actually, and I'm especially excited because, Janet, you're taking us to see some businesses that are new to the Amesbury business community. Correct. New businesses, and that is so much fun to get to meet them and to hear about why they chose Amesbury and um, what, their, what their offerings are, what their background is. So today we will be at Sunny's Natural Wine, and we will learn more about their business. And then we're going to take a trip over to CNA stores and we will be meeting with Rob DeFazio and we'll learn about the, he does all, he's got a very interesting story. We'll hear about what he offers and also he does a lot of um, philanthropy. He works on a lot of good causes so we'll talk to him about some of that too. So wine, cannabis, and philanthropy. Sounds it's like a good a combination. Good combination. Right. I'm excited because those are truly two new businesses in the city that didn't exist um, right. until relatively recently. So wow, here's a real right. chance where we get to get to be introduced. Yeah, great. And looking forward to it. Let's go. Okay, let's check it out. We have Laura and Caitlin here, so they're going to tell us about their shop and what brought them to Amesbury. Thanks for letting us do this. Thanks for being Thanks here. Thanks for having us, yeah. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about how long you've been here, what brought you to Amesbury. Let's start with that. Okay. Um, we've been here for about six months, and um, I'm actually originally from Newburyport, and so when we came to visit last year, essentially, for Mother's Day, Laura kind of fell in love with it, and we were itching to get out of New York City, um, and it just felt like a really smart move to come to where I used to live and open up a shop during a pandemic. Great. Why not? <laughs> right? Brave. Brave. <laughs> That's yeah. great. So tell us a little bit about the shop and about the concept. Sure. How did that start? Well, I mean, ultimately it really was because we that's all we drank in New York. And again, Laura would come to the bar I worked at and I'd be like, you gotta taste this, it's so good. And it, it was always a rotating cast of wines on the list. So we got to taste a lot of really fun stuff. So when we got here, um, we were trying to suss out like what could we do that feels authentic to us? And it felt like authentic wine doing really wonderful things was right because there's so many farms here and there's so many boutique breweries. Um, it felt right in line actually even with Amesbury and with the North Shore just in general. So it right. felt like a good match. And, and what makes your wine shop different than there are other stores in town that sell wine? Tell us about sure. the, the natural wines that you have and some of the differences sure. and some of the, the benefits. Sure. Well, we have a lot of people who come in here and they say, you know, I can't even drink red wine. I can only drink white wine. And we go, look, you try one of these wines you are going to feel completely different. Uh, you're not going to feel like you have a headache. You're not going to have a reaction on your skin. Uh, we both used to feel allergic to red wine. This is like a small little part of natural wine just in general, but um, it's, uh, there are no preservatives or chemicals in these wines. Um, and a lot of wine shops in the area do carry some wines that are like this. It's, it's not yeah. that you can't find them, actually, but that you can come here and you can really rest assured that the products that we have, we've really kind of vetted them and made sure that you know, someone who's here who's like sensitive to different chemicals is going to feel really good getting anything on our shelves. And so that's really important to us. So. Yeah. Great. Now you uh, you mentioned that you started during um, COVID, the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you navigated that and mm -hmm. uh, what was that like? What do you think, Laura? Um, we navigated it blindly. Um, I think, <laughs> you know, moving here from New York, uh, we were both on the brink of uh, different projects in New York when last year happened. And so I think we still had a lot of energy around that. Um, uh, we actually found the space before we knew what we were going to do with it. Um, 
but it's been yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been so Amesbury has been so open and supportive and lovely it's been really easy to navigate uh, because we've had such good support um, but yeah mm -hmm. people are still drinking and, yeah. and um, yeah I think it's been yeah tell us about what the uh, what your average customer is like is, is there a certain demographic there, there is the one yeah, yeah. There, I think that's yeah. also something we've really enjoyed experiencing here in Amesbury um, coming from New York with um, you know you can really live in your own little bubble there and mm -hmm. uh, here we have uh, regulars all over the board yeah. young families older uh, older, older gentlemen who just yeah. always come in and get their Chardonnay, it, um, you know, it's so really a lot of all regulars, a lot yeah. of regular customers. Yes. Absolutely. We've been so lucky with so many regulars. Yeah. yeah. I saw, I see on the door that you deliver. We do. We do. We do. Yeah. Great. Well, I deliver. I Kate, don't know how to drive, Kate so. Kate can't drive yet, but <laughs> I will deliver the wine, yes. Laura will be delivering your wine, yeah. if you do. So tell us about the background that you have. You mentioned that you worked uh, somewhere where you experienced natural wines mm -hmm. and you really liked the difference. Mm -hmm. So tell us what, what in your background makes you successful at this? Well, other I, than being courageous. <laughs> um, I honestly, I, I, uh, I've worked in the industry for 16 years now, basically since I could be a waitress. I was a hostess, then I was a waitress, then I moved to a bartender position, and I was a bartender for many, many years, and I was very lucky to work at um, multiple places in New York that were kind of on the forefront of just doing natural wine in like a really big way. Um, and so I feel very lucky for that. Um, so that and that I'm just a performer in general and I love being behind a bar. I just feel like it's so fun to give people um, a good experience. And this is not quite like that because not, it's not a bar, but um, it's really exciting to recommend something to someone uh, and they come back and they say, I loved that. It was perfect. perfect. You know, That's I wish I could have been there for it, yeah. but <laughs> it's, you know, it's close. Yeah. So. I, that's why I like it so much. And, and what are your plans for for growth? I know you have mm -hmm. a couple of you have some plans to mm -hmm. uh, to add to your business. Do you want to oh, speak yeah. to that a little bit? Sure, we do. We are in the process of also opening up a wine bar up the street on Friend Street. Because um, why not? Because why not? <laughs> and we also just had so many people come in and be like, "Can we drink in here?" It kind of looks like you should be able to drink in here in so many it's ways. A, it's yeah. really a beautiful right? space. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and we're just excited to, again, like be doing what we were just talking about, just yeah. um, the community and having people come in and there's such a diverse group of people who, again, it's young families, it's their kids, it's older gentlemen, mm -hmm. it's, you know, grandmas buying wine for their daughters. It's nice. really lovely. So That's we're really excited to be doing that as well. So Great. Yeah. Um, so perhaps we can do this again once you yes, once you yes. expand and do Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We can pour you a glass. Yeah. Okay, I'm up for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, cuz yeah. because I've shopped here and yes. have mm -hmm. and have picked up some some great wines yeah. that you recommended, so that okay. was well, that was you. great. Yeah. So, Lauren Caitlin, tell uh, tell everybody what made you choose Amesbury? How did you decide to start this venture here versus some other local sure. options? Sure. Um, well, after we had moved up here, Caitlin and I were just kind of feeling the lay of the land and uh, Caitlin drove us to, or no, I drove us to Amesbury and uh, because her mom used to have a shop here called mm -hmm. Fancy Schmancy. Yep. Uh, and we were just walking around and I was thinking how cute it is here and how mm -hmm. charming and warm and um, you know we had you know been in Newburyport and yeah. some other surrounding areas and we didn't quite get the same feeling that we got that we had when we were here yeah and we were having a drink outside of um, Fortune, Fortune Bar, Bar and we both kind of just looked at each other and we're like this, this is we're let's gonna do here do something yeah. here this feels right yeah so and it then felt we, right it felt like home it did yeah. it did it felt welcoming and uh, more community-based. I think we're both yeah. big on community, and I yeah. think 
uh, with some of the surrounding areas, we were a little nervous about it being more tourist driven, where um, here we felt like yeah. we really would have the regulars in the community and be yeah. able to uh, be supportive of the community during exactly. um, such a hard time. Well, yeah. and, and I was just going to ask you about that because you started this business in, during COVID. So yeah, who does is. that? So tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Why? Well, we're crazy. <laughs> why, why and how yeah. did, that, did that all come about? I think we were both, like, we honestly, like, we both could have collected unemployment for the duration of COVID and we're, that would have been okay. But um, we're just not those types of people. I think we found this space and we thought, we got to do something. We got to do something because um, we missed people. I think in a really big way. So you, so you found Amesbury, yeah. and first yeah. you fell in love with Amesbury. Yes. Then you found the space yes. and fell in love with the space yes. and said, "Okay, how are we going to morph this into a business?" Yes, that's yeah. how that went. That's okay. literally yes. how it went. All right. And, that's I, how and went. I think it's kind of, uh, in hindsight, the funny foreshadowing of this all is that the first thing we bought when we went into lockdown. Um, was a case of natural wine. Yeah. So I feel like our that fridge really was just full of natural wine. Literally, no just, food. We everyone was worried about toilet paper and paper towel, and we were worried about natural wine. Yeah. So, so yeah, there you go. Well, it's basically it's it's basically fruit, right? So yeah, it is. It's, so it's good for you. <laughs> it's honestly it's good, good for, for you. you. It's yeah. made well by good people doing yeah. good things. So. Yes. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Anything else that you want to share about your experience here, your experience in Amesbury, or something that someone who might be contemplating opening a business, anything yeah. that you want to I mean, out there? I think this community is so hungry for um, and welcoming to anyone. Entrepreneurs. Yeah, yes. anyone that yeah. wants to open a business. And, you know, it's it's been a scary time to open something. And uh, I think we've really felt how important it is to everyone in the community to do supporting local. Yeah. And they check in with us every week. How's it going? Is it good? Yeah. I've told my friend to come here. So I would highly yes. suggest anyone that wants to come yeah. to Amesbury to, to do consider so. it. I Take the risk. Yeah. yeah. Great. It doesn't feel like a risk. I mean, we're considering a second business here. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. Well, yeah. we're very, very happy to have you, and we're really looking forward to seeing your business thrive here. Thank you. Thank so you. thanks for bringing up, letting us come in and do this yeah. and, uh, and get your information out to everybody. Sure. Thank so, you. Wishing Thank you, you all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah. That was pretty neat. It was fun, and we got to sample some of their wine, and actually I was able to purchase some to bring home, so it was, it was great. It was a worthy trip. So yeah, I, I think I get a kick out of the fact that Laura and Caitlin said it's time to go back to Massachusetts after they were, I think it, you said Brooklyn, right? I don't, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they were in New York, and they, they fell in love with Amesbury as they were driving through Amesbury. It felt like home to them, and I loved that story. Um, also, they decided to open their business during COVID. I mean, who, who does that? And they took a risk, and they're, they're doing really well. So, Savvy entrepreneurs do that, and especially when they pick Amesbury. And so that's, I'm psyched that Laura and Caitlin picked us. I'm psyched that they, they actually brought their business into a storefront that had been vacant for years. And, and they happen to be from Newburyport. Yeah, I know, and they, so they picked a better it. community. So, so that's a win. We got them on this side of the river. That was uh, <laughs> happy with me. Um, so our next adventure, though, we're going to check out, um, again, another new business, but one that's not exactly selling natural wine, but they're selling something else that's natural, right? Yes, which, um, with, what a huge operation they have there. So that was very interesting to see as well. It was really nice to sit down with Rob. Well, let's go check them out. CNA Stores, here we come. Everybody, this is Rob DeFazio with CNA Stores, and uh, we're here today to hear about the business. You have multiple locations, uh, lots of different products, lots to talk about. Um, thanks for having us in today. Well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you, how you got started in this business. Actually, maybe start with, tell us about the business. So CNA Stores is uh, a veteran-owned business. Uh, we're a cannabis shop. Um, we're 
in the process of doing, um, you know, we've got two retail stores. We, we're opening our cultivation site in Amesbury. Um, I got into the industry, I actually was in the military. I was in the nuclear power program for the Navy. And when I got out of that, I went into data centers. And I kind of grew up through the Y2K, the dot bombs, dot coms, whatever you want to call them, um, all the way up until about 2018. Um, I had started my own business. We were, I had two veteran-owned businesses that, that worked in the data center industry. Um, and my son, who was graduating from college, said, hey, Dad, they've made cannabis legal in Massachusetts. Let's get into that at the beginning like, um, like you did in data centers. And I'm like, well, I, let me take a look at it. And I started looking and originally did a little bit of investing, um, but then I kind of saw that it was taking off and my son was graduating, so I said, come on, let's go do it. Great. Um, so it, it's kind of a family business. Uh, from that standpoint, my son's the manager of our Haverhill store. Um, you know, and you know, we've got a lot of friends and family. Um, you know, I kind of think of CNA stores as one big extension of my family. Um, and it, it's the culture that we're trying to create is to have that that, that you know, family type environment to where you know, someone needs help, if your brother or sister, you don't question it, you go and do it. And that's kind of what we're trying to create in this work, work environment here with what we do. Um, you know, and it, it was interesting because um, you know, one of my conversations I remember having with my wife was saying, look, it's coming to Amesbury, whether we do it or not. I said, I would like to be the one to control it because if it doesn't work, I can shut it down. Yeah. I said, so why not do it? You know, she's like, well, you know, and I'm like, him and Han, and I said, what, what's the worst that could happen? And she's like, well, I guess, you know, if you're controlling it, then it'll be, it'll hopefully turn out good. And if it doesn't, she's like, I, I know you'll shut it down. You know, and I've got, you know, grew up in my kids, all my kids grew up in Amesbury. I've been living there for, since 2003. Um, I've got a, my son Shay, 16, he's in the high school, and my two kids graduated from Amesbury High School. They've gone on, and my two older kids have gone on and graduated, um, you know, from college. And now my son works with me here, and my daughter's got her own business. But, um, you know, it's, it's been an interesting, I'd say, three years from when we started this to where we're at now. Great. Um, never thought it would take that long, but... Um, I guess, you know, in the long run, it'll turn out uh, good, you know. So you live in Amesbury. Yep. You've raised your, you're raising your family in Amesbury, and your business is at 77 Macy Street. Yep. Right? Great. Right by the Irving Station, uh, Rocky Hill Road yep. there? Right up right, by, uh, right as you come off 495. Um, we're the first building on the right. So, so you have three, lo three locations? We have two locations. Two locations. Well, we technically have three, two retail stores and then a cultivation site. Um, cultivation site's on South Hunt Road. Uh, we're in the process of building that out right now. So that'll allow us to grow and sell our own uh, cannabis products from manufactured edibles to pure flour and pre-rolls and things of that nature. And who's, who's your, tell us about your typical customer. <laughs> Believe it or not, our typical customer is somewhere, the average customer is about 47, 48 years old. Um, you know, mature, hardworking adults. Uh, it, it's interesting to see how, like, we get people coming in here that are 70 plus. Um, I think last week we had an 88 year old come in um, when I was working out front. And, and to me, I just, it's amazing because you would think you would get the younger generation. Um, you do still get those, but because of the prices, um, they're, not, they're not really able to afford a lot of it to some degree. Um, but you still have those, you know, a, a good mix of uh, customers that come in. And it, it's funny because it's a lot of people that, you know, haven't tried it before or tried it back when they were in college 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they come in and, and I tell my, my, my uh, employees that it's not a matter, it's not turnstile. We don't, we don't care how fast they, or how long they take. We need to create that experience, right? So that when they come into our stores, they feel like they're welcome, they get all their questions answered, and we're not rushing them out the door. So um, again, it's just trying to create that you know, whole experience as you come in. If you, if you kind of look at our stores when you come in, it's a, 
you know, natural woods, kind of, um, you know, ease, nice, nice and welcoming. Uh, we get music playing, you get a great vibe. Um, and our staff, uh, you know, I, I look at our company as, you know, the most important person in our company is the, the bud tenders helping our customers. Because if they can't, they don't do a good job, then our customers From an educational don't. Perspective? Education to personality to being nice, um, you know, and inviting, and then just, you know, um, getting to know them. It's kind of like when I remember, uh, you know, like Norm in Cheers, right? Where, you know, they walk in, hey, Norm, that's what I want. When people come in here, our staff know those people. And they're like, hey, we got a new product in. Try this, try that. The new strain of marijuana, let's try that one. You know, and they get, you get to know them to the point where you know that, you know, when they come walking in, oh, hey, we got this new one in, you should try it. Um, and that's the kind of feeling that people get when they come in here. Some people, they come in, they do a pre-order, buy it and leave. Don't say a word. But a lot of them, what we're finding out is that they, they, they want to talk. They want to understand what's out there, what's new, what's good, what's bad. So there's a whole consulting aspect yeah. to it. Yeah. So the, the people that you have behind the counter are educating and, and determining the best yeah, uh, it, best product for it, the customer. Yeah, and in most of the cases, it all depends on their experience level, right? Not, not our bud tenders, but our customers, whether they've tried it before or not. So worst thing you want to do is have a customer who's never smoked before come in and they say, I want to buy something that's the highest THC. You don't want to ever do that because what you'll probably end up doing is they'll get extremely paranoid because they have never smoked it before and they don't know what to expect and they never come back and you lose them as a customer and potentially to the cannabis industry altogether. So you start them off with a you know, lower THC, ones that have... Um, good flavor and terpenes and things of that nature um, to help them ease their way into it so they don't, you know, um, get that anxiety associated with them thinking that, you know, everybody thinks I'm high. Oh my goodness. So it's, a relative, so it's a relatively new industry, so there's a, so there's a lot there for you to educate people there on. There is, and, and, it, and it's, it's interesting because, you know, we, we, all our employees have to go through uh, training that the state requires. But we take it a little bit further and, and you know, we get them certified um, in some cases as, a, as master um, cannabis uh, certification that's put out by the Cannabis University. So they, they get a, a master certification which teaches them all about edibles, it teaches them all about how to make edibles, um, all the different types of strains, the history behind cannabis, um, the laws associated with it. It's a lot of great information. and how it kind of, um, how it impacts you from an indica standpoint, sativa standpoint, or certain, like people want to sleep, you don't give them an indica, you give them a, I mean a sativa, you give them an indica. Um, and, and what they can use to help them with, even from that standpoint, um, sleep, you know, anxiety and, you know, other things, pain and whatnot. So um, it, it, it does a lot of good, um, like for example, my mother has early onset of Parkinson's disease and her hands shake. Um, I got her a one-to-one -one tincture, which is a one for every milligram of THC, there's a milligram of CBD. And that stops her hand from shaking. Interesting. And, it, and it's, is it the cure? No, because a couple hours later it starts shaking again. But she can actually have dinner with us and not spill her wine as she's taking a sip. Um, which is great, you know, I mean, it, it, it gives her a better quality of life uh, and things of that nature. So it, it's, there's a lot of healing and good that comes from cannabis um, in that aspect. Yes, we're recreational stores, but at the end of the day, um, it's the same plant, whether you go to a medical store or a rec store. Um, and the only difference is your taxes. You pay more in tax on the recreational side than you do on the medicinal side. So that's really interesting. How many employees do you have with your with uh, the two stores? With the two stores, we're up to about 32, pe 32 employees. Okay. Yep. Full-time, part-time? Most of them are full-time. I think we have maybe two or three part-timers right now. And what made you want to open in Amesbury? Um, one, because it was coming. Besides the fact that you live there. Well, I lived there, and it was coming there. But um, I had just I had another business that I ran out of downtown Main, uh, Main Street in Amesbury. Um, we were in the old post office building. 
and um, I had sold that I'm business. I'm old enough to remember when that was the post <laughs> <Yeah>. office. <laughs> when, we, um, when I sold that business, that's kind of where I said, let's do something else. And I was 46, so I'm like, I got to do something. You know, and that's my son came up with the idea, and we saw the location, um, and we said, you know what, let's do it. So, Amesbury, its location, it, it's kind of hard on location wise because you have to find a landlord that owns the building yeah. because it's not legal federally, so you can't just go anywhere. Like, we tried to go into um, where Papa Gino's was over in Stop and Shop, and that building has a mortgage on it, and because it does, it's the bank, and they're right. backed by the FDIC, so they couldn't lease us space. So it was interesting to see what was available. There was really two spaces, and guess what? ATGs in one, and where in the other. Right. You know, and that's how it kind of landed uh, from that aspect. And, and Amesbury, it's where I live, so I mean that's why we're doing our cultivation site there, and we're doing our um, retail there. Right. You know? What's the uh, expectation on when the cultivation space will open? Um, <clears throat> we started demo. Um, we're at the point probably, I'd say this time next year, we'll be growing flour and producing, selling it. So about a year from now. Great. So what are your future plans? More stores? Um, any, what, what are your, any expansion plans? So we have, um, in, in the industry, you can only have three retail stores. Um, we have two, Haverhill and Amesbury. We're looking for our third one in Boston. We've got a location in Dorchester that we've uh, secured. We're also looking at another location in Seaport District. Um, <clears throat> we're also, one of my employees, we're, we're getting him set up as a delivery company so that we can actually do um, deliveries um, if needed. So <clears throat> a lot of different things. We've got uh, 144 acres in Winchington, Mass that we're gonna do another cultivation site at. Um, we're gonna take about 20 acres to do the cultivation site. The, the rest of that will be for veteran housing. Oh, so that's... we're gonna create our own workforce by our cultivation site. So not only will they have a place to live, but they'll also have a place to work. So it's kind of an interesting... Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, and, and it's great, because um, we've partnered with um, Terry O'Reilly and Dave Jensen, they own the property. Terry's the, they're both ex-Bruins right. players. Right. Great guys and-, and See, I'm, I'm old enough to know that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, met, I met them because our lobbyist was working with uh, another company doing tiny homes for veterans down in Milford. And she said, hey, you're on the board at VNOC uh, here in Haverhill housing, you know, for homeless veterans. And can you talk to these guys and see what they're looking at? And I said, yeah, sure. And I talked to them and the person who was making the tiny houses said, hey, you gotta talk to these guys out here in Winchington. So I started chatting with them and they started, hey, we wanna do tiny homes, this, that, and everything. And I told them what I did and they're like, hey, I think our property's zoned for that. Great synergy. Yeah, and it was just, you kind of, sometimes, you know, um, you get lucky, right? Things just kind of come together, you know? And to me, the definition of luck is when someone prepared meets an opportunity. Right. So that opportunity popped itself up and I said, hey, guys, let's 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 see what we can do together. And we we're working on we've got our HCA out there. We've got our plan started for that site. So if you think about CNA stores and what we plan on doing, we're going to be a multi-state operator. So we're looking at going into New York next year when it opens up. Um, I, I want to take this business to the point where it it, it, as far as it can go, but we're, we're trying to create a brand that's kind of synergistic around, you know, helping veterans and communities to, to providing top quality, you know. You don't want to be the well vodka in, in the bar, you want to be the top shelf like Great Goose. And I, that's kind of where I look at it, you know, um, that's where I think we are trying to drive CNA stores is to drive that quality, you know. And it was funny because when I worked in the data center industry, I worked for Google, Facebook, Amazon, all those big guys. And I go into the meeting and say, "Yeah, I'm from Amesbury, Massachusetts." They're like, "Where the heck is that?" <laughs> I'm like, "It's a you know, 45 minutes north of Boston." I said, "You didn't hire me because of where I live." I right. said, "You hired me because of what we do and our reputation." That's kind of how I want to take that approach with this side of this business. Is that brand? They want that. 
we want to get that you know name recognition to to where people can see our little crown and say oh that's CNA stores and they know what we do you know I was in uh, Newport Rhode Island at my down at my friend's um, bar probably at Patty's Day um, St. Patrick's Day and I was sitting there and a guy saw my hat and he's like what do you do and I said oh we're a cannabis company said, I knew it I knew it was because he saw our brand he kind of you know it made sense to him that's what we're trying to drive here is trying to create something that will help build you know a company that's sustainable that provides good jobs to to support local communities and things of that nature um, you know and, it, and it's 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 fun when you go to work and it's fun it doesn't seem like work right. you know what I mean it, I it, know exactly what you mean you know and I tell people I've retired because I'm having fun every day with what I'm doing right. you know and sure there are some days where it's not you know all beautiful and rose smells like roses but those there are more of those days and than, than not and it's like I said working with my son is is great you know I mean it's a lot of fun now I'm so I know that you're a local businessman but I know that you also are known for the philanthropy so tell us a little bit about what some of your pet projects are so so we we've, we've been uh, very fortunate to have a great team because they bring up these ideas that I don't even think of and, and some of them are awesome. Like we do snow angels, which help shovel out the um, old, uh, the elderly and um, veterans in Amesbury and in Haverhill. So I think last year we had upwards of about 80 people that we shoveled out. Um, and then um, we also work with Mass Fallen Heroes. We're setting up um, a store in Amesbury for veterans to go in and shop with steep discounts. Uh, through Mass Fallen Heroes, they partner with TJX, so they get a lot of their their um, out-of-date products and things of that nature. But it, it's pretty good. Uh, we also do um, we've done a lot with um, with VNOC, which is Veterans Northeast Outreach, and um, they that's for housing veterans. Um, we do a lot for like last Thanksgiving till the end of the year, we fed over 12,000 families. Wow. Out of our cultivation site, we had trailers come in with the with the help of Mass Military Support Foundation, and with working with um, the uh, the guys from uh, Mass Fallen Heroes, we set up shop where they bring in a thousand boxes of food that feeds a family for a week, Wonderful. and we would distribute out of our out of there um, to the point where we were actually bringing them down to some of the uh, nonprofits and, and so they didn't have to come pick them up. Um, to the point where we even had individuals driving up and grabbing meals. Right. So um, it, it's a lot of fun when you help people in ways when they, they don't realize it. Like one of the big things I do is the Pan Mass Challenge. So I'm on Team Lungstrong, which is Diane Legg, and that's a nonprofit in Amesbury. Um, you know, and we've got, I think, over 88 riders riding the PMC. Um, and that's a significant amount of money every year that we, we were almost, I think she, she's risen about four million dollars. That's incredible. It's insane. Um, and you know what's funny is, I'm a big guy. And when I tell people I ride a bike 180 miles, they think a motorcycle, right? I'm like, no, it's a bicycle. I said, gravity's my friend on the downhill. <laughs> but I get to the finish line and Diane's been there already two hours ahead of me. She's got stage four lung cancer. It's amazing that she can, you know, that she can still do this every day or every year and she still beats me. And I try like That's hell great. to catch her, but it <laughs> never works. Yeah, I, I would guess that you're a little competitive. Maybe. <laughs> just a little just smidgen. Well, and I know we, we kind of, we have to wrap this up. Um, I'd love to talk to you more uh, yeah. offline on how you know, we might be able to, to um, support some of the charities yeah, definitely. that you, uh, Absolutely. It was great. That you're involved with. So thanks. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks so much for letting us come in and talk to you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in. Rob's pretty interesting. That um talk about a neat business. He's got a great story and the work that he does to support veterans was um, was something I didn't know about. So this is a great, really a great opportunity that you've given us to be able to um, just showcase some of these people, these great business owners in Amesbury. I thought what was cool about today with your, your visits is to learn more about natural wine because we think we know about wine, but to learn how no actually there are real differences that exist, right? Um, but then to also learn 
about cannabis, which you know we hear a lot about in some communities. I live in a community where it can be a really hot topic. And you know, Amesbury has already allowed two retail cannabis businesses, including CNA stores, to open. And I think the economic benefits have been great. I think that we just saw, you know, kind of again a sneak peek behind that brick wall of all of their philanthropic efforts, how they drive so much activity and money and energy behind a lot of the groups, the nonprofit groups right. we care about. It just talk about community. Yeah, it's it's really great. And what I have found very interesting is all of these business owners have such a, a knowledge of the products that uh, that you just you would you know you can go in and really learn about what their offerings are. Well, I know that we only give them a snapshot, give you as viewers a snapshot. And Janet, you know, we spend a lot of time with these business owners. If people want to learn more, they certainly can go, and we encourage them to go check out those stores Absolutely. And, and talk to those people. But um, I'm just I'm grateful that you do this. I'm grateful that Amesbury and share Television. these clips and share these clips because. People will come from surrounding areas to come to Amesbury to come to these businesses, and that's what we want to. That's true. Share them. Right. Help, help promote them. Great. So thank you, Faulkner Commercial Group. You and your team are fantastic. Amesbury Community Television, they have a lot of patience with us with all of this editing that goes into this. And then, of course, our friends at Mountaintop Landscaping, thank you for helping, um, again, give us that sneak peek behind the brick wall and show more of the community what our business owners are doing. Great. Thank you. Thank you.